Hello and welcome back to the studio. This week we're doing something very different, something which, well, I haven't got a lot of experience at. That's right, we're going to be having a go at doing something like this. A street scene, moody and atmospheric, rainy possibly, something we really need to get our teeth into. But as I say, I'm a bit sort of gummy when it comes to these, I haven't got very many teeth. So the first thing we have to do is get rid of this great big canvas. I'm going to be doing something like this at a much smaller scale. This is how I would typically approach a painting which I wasn't familiar with. I might start off with doing something really more as a sketch, a tryout if you will, to see if I like how it's going to work out. This is a very effective way of using your time, rather than attempting to do something on a grand scale and they're going a bit well pear-shaped on you. Start with something a little smaller, a bit more sort of, like, sort of easy to work with. Thank you, Pip. Just going out for a stroll. So let's get on with laying out our drawing first and then start to work on the painting side of things. Sit tight, this is going to be fun. So here's my reference photograph. I'll leave a link to it down in the description, but it's freely available on Pixabay. Now you might decide you want to crop this closer to the two figures, like I've done in this example. What I will be doing though is putting in some layout lines. This gives me an idea of perspective. It's a tricky subject and if you're not used to it, these lines will become essential to keep your painting looking sort of right. The focal point is in the distance. As you see here, I've just gone over those lines with a biro. I'm going to transfer these lines onto a black canvas using this grey graphite paper. Let's have a quick check and see if it actually works. I secured the reference photograph onto the canvas with a couple of dabs of blue tack. Now, I just need a biro and a ruler. Lay on the line and just see what happens. As you see, I've done the entire tracing and the outlines show as just a sort of a faint silvery grey colour, but you won't be able to see those very well. So I'm going to go back over them again with a white graphite pencil. This makes it easier for you to see on the video. Because drawing is such a difficult subject for us, and really my channel is dedicated to painting, I opt to trace the figures on. You could freehand them if you wish to. But just remember, drawing is a skill all in its own, and I could probably spend a lifetime trying to work out how to do it well. But I will freehand on the outline of these background trees. And here's the finished perspective drawing. This is a wet on wet oil painting technique. And I'll be starting out with this, Bob Ross Liquid Clear. I use this to ease the application of colours. I have a small amount in an airtight pot. But if you don't have Liquid Clear, you can always use this, linseed oil. It works very much the same. I've also got a selection of synthetic brushes. They're all flat brushes. I think these work well for this sort of technique. I use the wider synthetic brush just to scrub on some Liquid Clear. Now do take care, because if you scrub over those lines, you will rub them out. So I just work in sections, filling in like I was doing panels. Over the figures, I just run my brush gently, adding just a touch. But don't make your canvas too wet. Especially if you're using linseed oil. That tends to go a long way. And here you see, I'm ready for the application of colours. Here's my palette. One particular colour I'm going to mix, it's Payne's Grey a very useful colour. Prussian blue, a green crimson and a dab of ochre. Because this is a street scene with a very definite grey mauve sort of tone to it, this is the perfect colour to use. I'll add a touch of white so you can see my mauvey tones first. Now watch. Yellow ochre. Just a touch. And you get this beautiful warm tone grey. Absolutely wonderful. A colour you should be mixing often. Now, let's compare it to our reference photograph. Do you see, I'm a little darker, but will it make that much difference on my painting? Strange, isn't it? You put a dab up there and then work it in and suddenly it doesn't look quite so grey. 
Our eyes are easily fooled. So, mix up a colour you like and apply it to your painting. And while I'm at it, I'll add the first sort of sheen of light to the road. I bring my reference photograph in closely and have a check. Don't know about you, but I think the reference photograph looks a little bit more sort of lavender, a little bit more mauve. I'll adjust that later on. As you see, I just work gently around the figures, adding in these little sheens of light. A few light sideways strokes, and you see we're starting to get the look of a wet street scene automatically. I love oils. They're perfect for this sort of work. But I do want to soften things a little bit, and I've got a very, very soft fan blender from the floral range of the Bob Ross paints. Here you see, I just want to soften out some of the details in that cloudy sky. But I don't want to take everything away. I'll also add a little bit of softness to some of the outline. Here, I've just picked up a small amount of the colour on that fan blender. I want to just gently mark out the position of things like the overhangs and canopies, the surface of the pavements. I think at this stage it's important to try and sort of set out some details here. Maybe in this background area here, we want to just add a little bit of a, a light area here too. Once again, this is all about setting out your painting. Here you see there's a little bit of an overhang. So I'll do a few little abstract lines here as well. Not looking for accuracy here, we're just looking for an impression. Let's start work on these background trees. They're nice and far away, and you see, there's no detail here. It's all very sort of low key. It's just down to the atmospherics of the photograph. I've mixed up some more of my Payne's Grey colour, maybe just a shade darker than the sky. And I'm going to use one of my small flat brushes here just to sort of scrub in a little colour. Again, no detail. I just want a loose impression of those backgrounds. I've added a tiny bit more yellow ochre to my colour. I want a sort of a greenish tint. I'll stab in a little tone here and there. To this colour, I'll also add a little black for the slightly closer tree on the left. It's a little bigger. A tiny bit more yellow ochre. There, I think that's about right. Once again, I'm just going to scrub this in. Just let the brush bump and bounce. I just want an idea that there may be a little bit of detail here and there, or a little shifting colour. At this stage, again, I'm just looking for the rough shape of things. It's not the focal point of this uh, painting, so I'm really not going to spend more than just a few minutes doing this. Once I've scrubbed in the basic shape and checked it against my reference photograph, I just want to soften this down. Again, I'm using a very soft fan blender brush for this. Just knock off any sharp detail and just bring it all together. I might just touch up the edges of my tree where it crosses into the sky. So here's my painting after a relatively short space of time. I've probably been working on this for maybe 45 minutes or so. Those layout lines that I dropped in there kind of give us a bit of confidence, don't they? they kind of give us a bit of a road map to follow. And they're important to us when we're starting a new subject and we're not familiar with it. Give yourself the chance to do the best painting you can by taking away some of those little hurdles, like dropping in the figures in pencil first. There's no disgrace in doing it. People have been doing that for centuries, so why not you? Now, turning to my painting, I can see that there are things which are not exactly following the reference photograph. For instance, the shapes of these trees. It's a little different. But will it affect the overall appearance of my painting? Not a bit of it. So I'm not going to waste too much time changing things and playing with them. I think there are more important things to do in my painting, getting those lovely reflections, that bright pop of light, and of course working on these figures. So don't get bogged down in those little sort of details in backgrounds. In fact, the entire background is completely out of focus, it's all blurred. 
which will be a challenge for us when we're painting these little buildings here. This is where I'm going to be using a fan brush occasionally to actually sort of deliberately distort some of those sort of shapes and images to blur those edges. I don't want them too sharp. Anyway, relax and carry on watching my video. I'll be working on these two little figures in a short time. I dragged in my small flat brush and gone back into a little bit more of my homemade Payne's Grey. I just want to firm up a few of the layout lines, add a little bit more structure to my painting. As I mentioned, those layout lines give me confidence. It means that my painting is going to work out. I've done this painting in a very sort of loose, painterly style. I think this is an important point to remember when you're painting, especially the sort of detailed areas of your painting. We're not looking for total accuracy. We're looking for a loose impression. But I'm afraid it's a habit us artists have got. We look for detail that sometimes, well, just isn't there. And if we don't see it, we sometimes invent it. You'll see I get myself into a bit of a pickle later on. I look at my reference photograph and realise the overhang of this roof is slightly off. I've made mauve, white and added a hint of black. And I'll use this to sort of block in some of the detail here on the left hand side. Again, I just want a light mauve colour here, just to add a little bit more movement and detail. It doesn't have to be accurate though. Notice the colour is slightly different to that in the reference photograph. You tell me later on, when I've done a bit more of my painting, if you think it's going to make any difference. Once again, loose and painterly. Now here's a really dark mauve version of that same Payne's Ray colour. I just drop in where I think the lines are. But no detail here. Especially up here at the very highest point of our reference photograph. It's not where my eye falls. It looks at the two figures and the distance. So I can get away with almost anything here. Just drop in a loose impression of what you think might be there. I want to tidy up this part of my painting. Maybe just drop in a few stronger lines. But do you see my mistakes? They're there, but you don't necessarily see them. And as my last video told you, I'm not going to tell you what I think is wrong. If you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. But don't spend too long looking for it. Once again, you see, I soften down the details a little more. I think I need to add a little touch of colour here and there, just to bring things together a little more. And that background tree is definitely looking, well, more mauve than I've painted it. Let's add a little touch of colour to my background painting. And then we can start working on adding the bright lights. Gone back into some of my mauve colour that I used on my building on the right. Once again, I just touch it in here and there. Save a little of the green colour here. I'll even add a little bit on the roadway. Just a few streaks of colour. Now, I don't overdo this too much. I want to be brushing across as well. And I want just again, to remember this is supposed to be maybe a street or a road and it's got some sort of detail on it. I drag my brush backwards and forwards and I use another long handle brush as a steady. It's a neat trick if you don't have a mull stick. I tidied up my palette and laid out some colours for the lights. I mixed red and Indian yellow together to make a warm orange tone, then added some white. And as you see, I've made a curtain of colour, going from red on the left to the very palish yellows on the right, and so I can dip into the colours where I think I need them. I've got a fresh, clean, dry, small flat brush. Go into a little bit of the bright red tones here. And I want to just again drop in a suggestion where I think they are. This is more for layout. So not much paint on my brush. I think there's a little touch of that red colour in this shop window. And I'll add a little touch in the shop window next to it. Just about here, I think. Once again, you see the value of holding a reference photograph close to your painting. And let your eyes go between one and the other. A small mark 
check your painting, hold your brush on the canvas so you can check and see where you are. If you keep your brush in contact with the canvas, you won't lose your position. It's a neat trick, but just add small touches of paint. That's a top tip. Here, if I don't like what I've done, I can easily rub it out. Take it steady at this stage. Take lots of standbacks from your painting and see if there's any referred light or reflected light that you want to add to your painting. It adds a sense of warmth. Now we're happy with things. Let's go back in and strengthen up some of these colors. So I'm going to go for a slightly brighter yellow color here. Once again, keep your reference photograph nearby. Mine is just out of shot here. You can see I go backwards and forwards with my eyes between the reference picture and my painting. I keep my brush close to the vicinity where I'm painting. This way I won't lose my position. I make small adjustments and stand back. By working a nice steady progressive way, you won't really get too far wrong. If things look a bit too bright or a bit too detailed, I soften them up with my little fan blender brush. Now, two bright dots in the distance here. They cast a little bit of light on the wet road surface. I'll just touch in a little bit of highlight here. By not using the brightest colour first, it means I got a chance of balancing my painting. Add a few details and stand back, and then add a few more saving the final bright colors to the very end. If you enjoy my tutorials, don't forget, like and subscribe. That's it. Hit the little thumbs up button. It tells YouTube I'm doing something you enjoy, and hopefully other people will, will like it as well. You can also subscribe to my channel. Surprisingly, not very many people have. This way, you get to know when my latest video is about to be released. Best of all, it's all free. So hit the subscribe button. If you want to go a little further, you can even buy me a coffee. I spend all the money on new painting supplies. Thank you. For the detail in the background, I'm going to use one of my old favorites, a cotton bud. I just dipped it into some paint and touched it to the canvas. As you see, I've been adding little specks of light here and there. But now for some shadow. I'm using one of my small flat brushes with a little touch of that dark lavender color on it just to add in the suggestion that there's maybe some cobblestones or this is a paved street. I allow the gaps between these little dark marks to be slightly larger in the foreground and I punch them together in the distance. So here's my painting at the next stage. I've completed all the background and added all these lovely lights and the reflections and that was a lot of fun to do. It actually wasn't that hard. Once I put a few little reference marks in, I checked against the reference photograph, made sure everything was about right, and then just added the detail, and then just enjoyed playing with the colours. It was a lot of fun to do, and I do hope you have a go at this painting. Now, all we have left to do is to add these two little figures. I have to say a big thank you also to Paul Clark. He's got a wonderful watercolour channel on YouTube, and he's actually done this entire painting as a watercolour tutorial as well. So if you want to compare the two paintings to see how they look, then I'll leave a link to his channel down below in the description. Now, on with the painting, so don't move. It would appear that both my little figures are wearing blue jeans, so Russian blue is perfect. Here you see I'm using a mild stick to steady my hand. I'm going to just block in a basic blue colour. I'll get into adding shading on this in a moment. Sometimes it's better just to get the basic colour down. But also notice that I'm not actually getting rid of the marker lines just yet, but I will paint them out eventually. Right now, they help keep me on track. Because believe you me, it's easy to start painting outside the lines. Something we're encouraged to do with thinking, but on a painting, not a good idea. I give this figure a backpack as well. But even though on reflection, there wasn't one there. You see another detail that I imagined. And that's one of the challenges with painting things like figures and detail. If we can't see it, we imagine it. We simply make it up. 
and then realize on closer examination that it really isn't there at all. So paint what you see, not what you think is there. I started work on the umbrellas, adding just a little bit of gray and a tiny touch of that mauve color to highlight the top of the panels. Once again, you see, I'm leaving the outline, the markers for the panels fairly visible at this stage. Let's start work on the larger of the two figures. If you look at their feet, you realize that the taller of the two figures is actually closer to us. They're not walking side by side. But top tip, try not to see the detail that isn't there again. I fell into that little trap and I almost fiddled this figure to death. I overworked it. I added detail that I couldn't really see. I started adding creases and backpacks. So I'll play with the umbrella instead. Give my brain a rest. An important way of stopping yourself overworking parts of your painting is to leave a little bit of the background still to do. And this is what I did in this painting. From experience, I remembered that maybe if I had just a distraction, it would stop me working too hard on one part of the painting that really didn't need it. Here you see, I just put in some of the more brighter reflections on the ground and then did a few more subtle retouches on the figures. And here is the final painting. I think it was very successful. For a very first try at a street scene, I'm very pleased. And I hope you'll have a go at painting this as well. So there we have it, my version of a street scene. But it's not the only one in the house. In fact, here's Terry's version of it done as a watercolour. Just goes to show there's more than one way to paint a street scene. But if you've enjoyed watching this, don't move. There's some more lovely videos coming right along. Happy street scene painting people. I say that after a couple of drinks. Rich, what, what are you doing? Yes. Oh. What? What, baby? Oh no, look, it's white paint there. Oh no. You didn't stand in that, did you? I bet you did. Oh, goodness. Come on, everyone wants to see you. <laughs> it's just too much.